I learned the spirituality of the game, the mindfulness that comes with the game, and play effortless basketball. Seventy-three championships had been won in NBA history by 2020. Michael Jordan is heralded for winning six of them. Bill Russell, the winningest player of all time, won an inconceivable 11. But the man who wears the most rings is the same man who guided Kobe on the road to five of his own, Phil Jackson. Inevitably, when a team accomplishes their ultimate goal and raises the Larry O'Brien, a majority of the credit goes to the players, and rightfully so. The coach usually gets the second batch of love, and often can be pushed into the background as the honors are bestowed upon the players. This is not the case for Coach Phil. Over the span of three decades, Phil Jackson was entrusted with leading some of the greatest players ever to championships. Using unorthodox methods and his even keeled demeanor, Jackson reigned in personalities that would overpower lesser men. While he never physically threw Brian a pass that led to a bucket or set him a pick, Phil Jackson was just as important to Kobe's success as any of his teammates. Entering the 2010 season, Jackson and Bryant were in the final act of a long up and down relationship. Phil had been Kobe's coach for over 75% of his career. In their early days, the two made a controversial duo, a juxtaposition of very different characters. Phil was always a serene presence on the sideline, while the younger Kobe was a stormy enigma, out to show the world he was the best at any cost. This obviously led to some clashes. In his book, The Last Season, Jackson would claim that Kobe can be consumed with surprising anger, which he's displayed toward me and toward his teammates. He rebels against authority. Jackson recounted tales of a young Kobe lashing out at teammates, especially Shaq. The feuds pushed their relationship to the limit, but they still had success. Jackson and Bryant had lived through the highs of three straight titles. They had experienced the heartbreak of falling just short of the ultimate goal in the 2004 finals. Most importantly, the two had fought through the awkward time when Jackson had called Kobe uncoachable and left the team after the 2004 collapse. That year, Jackson told the Lakers, I won't coach this team next year if Brian is still here. He won't listen to anyone. I've had it with this kid. And Phil would leave Los Angeles, honoring his word but he couldn't stay away for long. After just one year apart, Jackson and Brian were reunited. By the time the Lakers were suiting up for what would be the pair's last championship together in 2010, the past had long been dead and buried. Part of the reason for the duo's success was the goal that drove both men to win and do it often. Kobe knew Phil's tactics would take his game to the next level, and Phil knew Kobe had what it took to lead a team to a championship. The mutual respect is what took that team to the next level. Jackson knew the 2010 Lakers were loaded with contrasting personalities. The star of the mouths of the palace, check. The man who had just married a Kardashian and was starring in a reality TV show, yup. A mild mannered power forward and gentle giant who looked like he couldn't hurt a fly, yes sir. And that's not even including Kobe Bean Bryant. Like a man doing a puzzle, Jackson pieced them together to build a masterpiece. Phil's style is nothing that anybody else implores. I was just impressed with how well he managed egos, managed players. I was thankful as a you know end of the bench player. He always made sure that we were getting run during practice, like real live run. We'd either run during the during the live practice or we'd play three and three, four and four, so you always felt like your game was up to par. To me, he's one of the greatest of all time, not just because of the wins, but just, you know, he was just a brilliant manager, if that makes sense. 
I think he's more of a manager than a coach. Instead of attempting to mold and force players into something they weren't, Jackson recognized individual strengths and he used each one to his advantage. Sasha Vujicic said, what made our team special was the ability to make our diversity our biggest strength. I largely attribute this to Phil, who assigned a specific role to each player. The success of the team hinges on every player's ability to carry out his individual responsibility. The same strategy that worked wonders for Jackson for years paid off yet again. But to bring this group together, Jackson couldn't just use X's and O's. He found something that worked for him, but he was willing to make small changes to make that thing, to make it happen. And uh, his philosophy and what he believes has showed to be true for him and his team. So that's his, his philosophy, and it just worked out that in a, a playoff series in a seven game series, you can put a lot, a lot of pressure on point guard and make them have to do quite a bit. Known affectionately as the Zen Master, Phil employed a calm, cool presence that didn't lessen his drive for victory. As a staunch supporter of meditation and mental health, Jackson intertwined his teaching philosophies with his spiritual view. I don't know how many spiritual coaches across the board there are. You tell, you tell me, I can't call that one. I'm, I'm very appreciative of the old school coaches, you know what I mean? And I know it's a new era, a new wave, but the way Phil was and how he handled you know, I'm just beyond grateful because he was just so patient and he knew, he knew how to push the right buttons. You know, in that system, everybody got a chance to shine. He was the yin to Brian's yang. And the Lakers had the best of both worlds, a fiery floor general and an even keeled sideline presence. But Jackson wasn't afraid to mix it up when he needed an extra kick. One time, he played Chris Mim in the NBA Finals. Chris Mim, the guy who played zero minutes all postseason for the Lakers, in the finals, just to shake it up. He would get two fouls in two minutes before Phil took him out for Kobe, but Chris Mim is now forever undefeated in the NBA Finals, 1-0. Thanks, Phil. Suffice to say, Phil knew exactly when to throw his team a curveball, keeping them on their toes always. Sasha Vujicic shared a funny story about this. We were in the building stages of what would become a championship team. Phil put his credit card at the half court mark and set the clock to 60 seconds. If we made a half court shot before the time ran out, dinner would be on him. We obviously got it and had a great celebratory dinner, but then we received the bill. They told us that the card expired, one of the Zen Master's many antics over the years. We found a way to charge his new card. I still remember the proud smirk he wore the next morning. Players like Ron Artest often needed this extra kick. I remember one time we were sitting there and they were running through some of the, um, um, you know, triangle actions. He yelled at Ron for something. And then he looked over and he's like, you gotta make sure that you only do that every once in a while. But through it all, it always came down to one important factor for Jackson, mutual respect. The one thing I've always liked about Phil is, you know, obviously I didn't play much, but he always, um, you know, took the time to tell you why you weren't playing or gave you a reason why. If you tell you, you know what I mean? You can respect that as a player. It's treating you as a human being and treating you as a professional, no matter what your place on the team. This ideology worked with Jordan and it would work with Kobe. The pair worked through the painful rebound of the 2008 loss as Kobe put his faith in Phil's mentality and system, and Phil used Kobe's talent to elevate it. No two humans in that 2010 Lakers organization knew each other's strengths and weaknesses like Kobe and Phil. So when June 2010 arrived, they promised each other to avenge 2008. For two full years, the Lakers waited for their chance to bury the nightmare of 2008. But there was a sense of destiny in Kobe and the Lakers that year. 